Money changes everything. Money changes everything. That was a song by Cindy Lauper in the 80s or the 90s. And when we're talking about business partnerships, money changes everything. Welcome to JT and the Raw Show 108, where I chew the thin on business. And after 30 years in business, I just got a few thins to chin. A few thins to chew. A few thins to chew. G'day, Shauna. Good morning, Susan. Good morning, Brett. I'm coming to you live today from Performance Personal Training out here at Gregory Hills uh, in Sydney. I've got the New South Wales Personal Trainers Industry Leaders Roundtable on today, and I just had a workout with a bunch of guys here, um, and it was a hell workout. So uh, it was awesome. I'll tell you about it shortly. So today's show, I want to share and have a couple of ideas around you thinking and doing differently when it comes to partnerships. And of course, we can have partnerships in relation to um, business where someone's a financial partner or even a partnership where we're putting somebody uh, in profit share uh, in our business or even having people uh, come in as a uh, partner, as a manager in our business. So we're going to talk about that today. We're going to unravel that. We're going to unpack that and have a bit of a Chew the thin on it. Good morning, uh, Eugene down there in Melbourne. A couple of shout outs. First of all, I do want to give a big shout out to the boys here this morning. We did 15 kilometres on the ski erg in 53 minutes. After you did a little interview interval on the ski erg, we then quickly jumped down for five push ups, five burpees, and five uh, goblet squats. And can I tell you, it was one of the toughest workouts I've done in a long time. I am so so thanks boys for the workout thanks for pushing me in and what I realized while we we're doing that workout is how critical working out in a team can be and I think that doesn't matter whether we're talking about business or sport or even working out in a gym there's a lot of power to working out in a group uh, it, it is super powerful super motivating and keeps you going so uh, Maybe that's what we need to be doing in our businesses more often. Morning, Alan over there in Spain. Good morning, Nicole. Nicole, congratulations on opening your studio up there on the Goldie. That is awesome for you. Super stoked. I got a big shout out this morning. He's not on social media, but this may somehow get back to him. Got a big shout out to Brent Darden over in Texas in the US. Brent's been coaching me on a nomination and uh, an application that I'm putting together ready for next week. Uh, I really appreciate all the help and time that Brent's given me. Uh, this is a really important nomination that I am putting forward and, and application that I'm putting forward. So uh, I want to make it just right, and Brent has been sensational. So if anyone is looking for help on uh, how to apply for something, I highly recommend Brent Darden. And the third shout-out today goes to a company in the US, Motionsoft. Motionsoft is running in the first week of uh, October uh, their fifth annual technology summit for the fitness industry. This is a big freaking deal. And uh, just yesterday, we've been working on this for around about eight or nine weeks now, but just yesterday it was officially announced that the Fitness Business Podcast and Active Management are the media partners for the fifth annual Motionsoft Technology Summit. And I am super stoked, super proud of what we have with the podcast and active management. This is a pretty big deal that a, a small podcast in Australia that, that started with, you know, not a lot of people has now, what are listening to it, we've now up to, I think, uh, nearly 260,000 downloads, 180 odd shows, um, and we are really becoming a platform internationally for the fitness industry and to get messages out. So we are super, super excited um, that we have been officially appointed the media partner. It's great for us. It's going to give us massive exposure through the US market. It gives us some awesome speakers. Um, at Active Management, I'm going to be blogging uh, and video blogging directly from the Motionsoft conference. I think I'm one of, the, one of the few Australians to ever go to that event. So we are super pumped. Congratulations, Chantel, on the work you've done behind the scenes to get this. Uh, but this is a really big deal, and I'm really proud uh, to announce that today officially. So uh, give me some love hearts if you think that's a really big deal as well. Okay, so this week, uh, actually this week and last week, last two weeks, 
I think I've had about eight conversations, eight separate conversations with people in partnerships. I've had conversations with people that are looking to go into a partnership. I've had conversations with people who are in a partnership looking to maintain that partnership and conversations with people who are looking to exit a partnership. Uh, I don't know, maybe it's the moon, maybe, maybe it's the time of year, I'm not sure what it is. Morning Scott, Robbo, how are you mate, up there in God's country, Newcastle. I don't know what it is, but eight conversations to me is a lot of conversations around partnerships. Uh, and for me, uh, from my experience, the only partnership I've ever had has been with my parents. Uh, morning Pete Crawford down there in Victoria, it was great to catch up with you this week. Uh, just letting everybody know I was training in the gym and uh, looked over and there was Pete Crawford lying on the ground doing his mobility exercises. So we uh, had a little workout together and then went and grabbed a coffee. Um, completely random. So the only partnership I've ever had is with my parents and it's pretty hard to break up with your parents and, and sometimes you had to make tough decisions with them as well. So I'm not an expert in the sense of um, experience in partnerships. But what I can tell you is what, I've ex what I have experienced from the outside looking in. And in, our, in the fitness industry and in small business, I can honestly say really I only know one or two businesses where partnerships have allowed the business to flourish. Where partnerships have allowed the business to flourish. And that's because the partners are very much a yin and yang. They actually work together. So you know, yin and yang, they're not like this, they're like that. Um, one makes up for the other's weaknesses. Um, their, their strengths are different. In comparison, I know a lot of partnerships where we've got type A personalities, high D personalities, both coming in and, and running a business. And that simply doesn't work. But until we get into a partnership, we don't know that. I will never forget one day, um, I, I had a group of uh, colleagues and they decided that they would go in business together individually outstanding business people put them together and they became antagonistic to each other they were challenging each other and the business in fact suffered and they and the business lost money and, and ended up uh, dissolving and going and going bust so it's partnerships are particularly interesting um, I think you need to be very careful that once money becomes involved, we need to make sure that the arrangements from the start are very clear on how the partnership would work. So I've got four questions that I put together today on what we need to ask before going into partnership with someone. And the first question I think is the most critical one. Why do you want a partner? Often, the answer of why we want a partner in business is because we want more capital. We need cash into the business. And to me, that is not the right answer. The reason you would want a partner is because they're going to bring a skill set into the business that you don't have. They're going to bring a skill set into the business that you don't have. If the only reason you're bringing in a partner is because of cash, then I think that is the wrong reason. That is the wrong reason. A second reason people often bring a partner in is to buy out competition. So we've got business A and business B and we bring them together and we become partners. But we don't necessarily know that person in business A. So why would we get into partnership with them? So we need to be super clear, super clear on why do we want a partner. And if the reason you want a partner is because you need more cash, good morning Sean Sites over there in the US. How are you mate? Hope you're doing well. Hope your anytime clubs are booming. If the reason that you, you need cash, if, if the reason you're going into partnership is you need cash, then for goodness, for goodness gracious, find another reason or another way to get the cash. Going to somebody else and bringing them into your business so that they have decision making in your business, I believe is a mistake. You don't know them. You don't know them. And even if you did know them, when money comes in, things change. I was speaking with someone recently and they told me that they were looking at selling 10% uh, of their business. They had their, their, their sum up front that they wanted someone to buy into. And that person that was going to buy in 
was actually fronting five other investors. So they were all five, so they were collecting money from five other people to get their percentage of the share to buy into the business. I'm like, that means that they're not actually your partner. It's the five investors that are your partner. This person just put together this group. So this person's not making the decisions. These five people behind. So you now got a partnership of six people. These are the things that we don't know until we peel back the onion, until we truly understand what that partnership lo really looks like. It can get ugly when money is involved. So my thought process here is this. If the reason you're looking for a partnership is because you need cash, go and find someone another way to find cash. If the reason you're going into partnership is because of it's a skill set that you need in your business, then I'm going to entertain the idea. But is there another way other than giving up some of your shareholdings to be able to get that skill set into the business? Is there another way? So question one that you need to ask is why am I going into partnership with someone? Question two is what are the expectations of the partner? What are the expectations of the partner? Again, someone else I spoke with the other day, he sold off 5% uh, of his business to somebody and that per his expectations was that this person would um, be in the gym, in this case it was a gym, be in the gym three nights a week to close because he, as the major shareholder, had a family and wanted to be home um, for those nights with his family. Makes perfect sense. Only problem was the expectations were not written down. They weren't clear. And six months later, the partner is not in the club those three nights. He's clocking off at four o'clock in the afternoon. He actually doesn't have true ownership values. But we've only just worked that out six months down the track of the partnership. Now we've got to try to work out how do we solve the partnership. So what is absolutely critical is what is the expectations of that partner. And I believe those expectations need to be both in the case of numbers plus also responsibilities. They need to be clear. They need to be written down. You need a written legal agreement between you and your partner. It's not a handshake. It's not something you come up with over a beer. It is sitting down having a legal contract drawn up between both of you of what both uh, expectations of both parties are. Question three, perhaps also in that agreement, is what is the conflict resolution process? Partners will argue. Partners will not always agree. But what is the resolution process? That needs to be stipulated up front. That needs to be stipulated up front. And number four is this. What's the exit strategy? So you go into partnership with somebody, but how do you get out of that partnership? What is the exit strategy in relation to your partnership? It, what multiple are we using to buy out? These are the things we must think about way before we in fact even launch a partnership. But my thought process right at the beginning is this. Why are you going into partnership? Why are you doing it? I don't think most businesses you need to go into partnership. I think you can run your business perfectly fine and get the extra capital that you need with less hassle, less worry, and less concern moving forward. It's okay short term, but long term it can get ugly unless things are sorted out. Now please understand, I am not poo-pooing at all the idea of a partnership. A partnership works well when you've got yin and yang, when you've got opposites, when you've got people that understand each other, when you understand the strengths and the weaknesses of each other. Partnerships can work. But I'm telling you, the majority of partnerships where you've got A um, personality styles or D personality style people, directors, put together in the same room, there's going to be blood on the floor. Good morning, JP Richard over there in the US. Mate, thanks for sending those photos through from the Fit Life Conference. I really appreciate that. They'll be going up over the next day or two on the Facebook wall. So that's it today for the show. If you got value out of today's show, love some love hearts. It was, I know this is a very niche market. I know not everybody is looking for partners. Not everybody is wanting to uh, 
to, to have a partner in business. So I really appreciate the fact that some of you have tuned in and, and um, hung around for the whole show. But I think it's important that we, we talk about this topic. It's, it's almost like a taboo topic to, uh, to pull apart being uh, forming a partnership. So I would encourage you to, to really think about this moving forward. If you've got to get in a partnership with someone, really, really think about it. Um, so again, as always, if you think you know someone could get value out of uh, the show, if you know anyone who's going through some partnership struggles, tag them in the comments below. It's been show 108 of JT and the Raw. If this show was completely irrelevant to you, good morning, Lisa Corn, on your deathbed out there in the eastern suburbs of Sydney. We're going to miss you today, Lisa, but uh, congratulations on completing the uh, Kokoda Trail. Uh, that is something on my bucket list uh, I plan to do when Zoe is 16. She doesn't know that yet, but I'm taking her as a bonding experience between dad and daughter, Kokoda Trail. So uh, if you didn't get any value out of this show, just put raw in the comments below and I'll send you a link to a show that you will get value out of. Uh, so um, that's it for the show today. Quote of the week. Quote of the week goes something like this. Before you get into partnership, Make sure the expectations are super clear. Before you get into partnership, make sure the expectations are super clear. Hey, you've been in to tune into J2 in the Raw, show 108. It's on every week, same bat time, same bat channel where I chew the thin on business and try and help you run your businesses a little bit better. I hope you have an awesome weekend. It's a gorgeous day here in Sydney. I'm off to the New South Wales Personal Trainers Industry Leaders Roundtable meeting where we are going to be talking all things around organisational structure. You guys have an awesome day. Have a cracking weekend. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate everybody jumping on board this morning. Have a ripper of a day.